Welcome back. Um, today's product that we're looking at is a shower head. As you can see here, we're going to be trying to model these uh, nozzles on the shower head. Um, and we're focused really on workflow. We are going to be using the latest tools um, in Inventor 2017 for this. But really, uh, we're trying to string them together into a sort of cohesive workflow. So we're going to be looking at the ability to sketch, uh, do a 3D sketch on a curved face in Inventor and also to pattern features such as these nozzles by um, sketch points. In this case, there'll be sketch points in a 3D sketch. And we're also obviously very keen to orient these features, these little nozzles, um, according to the profile of that 3D face so that we get uh, they're all um, beautifully contoured as you see here. So let's, um, let's open up this part. Um, we can maybe make an even better pattern than this, but let's just uh, delete the existing features in here. I'll give you a little uh, ruin the suspense for this. We're going to be creating a 3D sketch in this part that's going to be defining a, um, the positions of four or five of these nozzles and then we'll be doing a circular pattern around. But the really nice thing here is that 3D sketch is on the surface here um, and those points in the 3D sketch are defining the positions. So let's delete everything up to that point. Delete all that beautiful work and let's see how we Go about creating that from scratch so I'm just going to delete everything so I don't cheat at all so I'm going to start a new 3d sketch lovely 3d sketching tools in Inventor 2017 I'm just going to start a curve on face so let me get square onto this part first and hit curve on face up here and let's just start drawing so the problem with this tool if I might be so bold, is that you don't really have the option to do anything other than draw a, a rough spline in here. So I can't right click and choose to draw lines or anything else instead. It's just a spline, but it is a spline that is very clever, that is um, snapping automatically to the curved surface as you're drawing. So when I'm done with drawing that spline on that surface, as you can see, I'm going to right click and say create. And there's my spline on the surface. Now, obviously, I need a bit of finer control than this. We want parametrics. Um, so I, I can start dimensioning those points up. So what I'm going to do, by the way, the fact that those, some of those points don't actually appear to be on the face is not something that I'm concerned about right now because that will sort itself out later on. So, But what I do want to do is to dimension these up. So you have to bear with me for a few seconds. I'm going to turn on the visibility of some planes in here. I'm going to start dimensioning. So I'm going to uh, make this as, as parametric as possible. I want you know, the, the offset position of that. If I click on the point and then the, um, then the plane, the offset position of that one to be, let's say, uh, 10 mil. The offset position of this one to be, uh, click outside here, to be maybe uh, 14 mil. Offset position of this one click outside here will be uh, just pulling pulling random numbers out here offset position of this one I think it's that one there that I want in it or maybe we'll go for this one here to be uh, click out here um, 26 now I've put those a bit too close but of course now we're we're getting some parametrics in here I can stretch that out so I'll make that one 35 I'll make this one 28 something like that 13, something like that. I'm being a little bit pernickety now, right? And so let's see if I want to specify the positions in this direction. Click the point, and then the um, then the plane. That's just a visible plane, by the way. I haven't projected it into the sketch or anything. Um, and I can specify the, the offset positions in this direction. So that one's seven mil. Um, this one wants to be five mil. Yeah, why not? Why don't I have a nice curvy profile here, just to live life on the edge? Uh, see, I want a bit more interest than that. There, if I make that zero, um, and I'll make this one. I'll make this one a little bit. I'll put a negative number on this one, if it'll let me. Which one's that gone to there? Hmm. 
So I can put negative numbers in there. So if I want this coming back a little bit the other way, I'll put minus three on there. And those are the positions that I want these points to be in. Okay, fully defined now and um, positioned on that face. Okay. Um, last thing, really nice little tip in here is those won't be recognized for um, placing features in a minute. I, I want to pattern these later on, so this will become clear a bit later, but I'm going to select all these points and I'm going to turn them into center points, make them actual points in the sketch. And you see how the display of them changes here. I'm going to select these two here and make those not center points. So that the only ones I want features on are those four there. Okay, and then I'm going to finish that sketch. Take just a moment to enjoy my achievements. Uh, pat myself on the back and now I want to create some features. So I want a nozzle feature that is always sort of square to this face. So I need a bit of construction geometry in good old Inventor Star. So I'm going to create an axis that is on that point and perpendicular to the face. Then I'm going to create a plane that is on that axis and perpendicular to the axis on that point. And now I can sketch on this plane here. And I'm going to sketch my first feature, which is going to be nice and simple. I'm going to make a 4 mil circle, and I'm going to make a 1 mil circle. Um, and those don't appear to be constrained properly. But I'm going to ignore that for now, because you guys know how to constrain sketches. So I'm going to finish this sketch, and I'm going to extrude it. Now, initially here, I'm going to extrude this as a join feature, not a new solid. And uh, we'll have another chat about this in a minute. But um, I'm going to extrude it as a join. One thing I might want to be careful about here is I might not be quite going into the part here because of the curved surface. So I actually want to extrude asymmetrically and go down into the part there by you know maybe a mil or two as well. So I'm going to specify a taper of 25 or minus 25. I want the equivalent taper on this side, so that's going to be 25 on this side. Um, and the distance of this nozzle, let's just make it 2.5. Um, and let's just hit OK. And then I need to turn on that sketch again, so I'm going to right click on the sketch and hit V for visibility to turn that sketch on. And then I'm going to extrude that cutaway. Well, I'm not too worried about exactly how this looks right now, so I'm going to keep that simple. Okay, so we've got our one feature here now, and I can put this feature on every one of these points. Okay, so I'm going to go to the new tool in Inventor 2017. Let's just save this part first. Sketch Driven Pattern, and I'm going to choose Features first off. We're going to do it differently in a minute, but I'm going to choose Features. Choose those features there. Um, choose the placement by sketch. This is where it's important that we change those points to actual center points rather than normal points in the sketch, otherwise they won't be recognized. Um, and here's where we need the orientation to be changing based on the face direction. So I'm going to choose the face first. It doesn't matter which direction I do this, but uh, sorry, which order I do this, but I'm going to choose face first. This can be multiple faces, by the way, if this was a more complex face that I needed to cover. And here's what's really important as well. If I hit OK now, without taking care of the base point, you see that orientation's wrong, and this is going to look wrong. So I need to be very careful to pick my base point and make sure that base point is the first point in the sketch there. And when I do that, the orientation of these features is going to be correct. OK, so um, I'm going to leave this one as identical now and just say OK. And now those features are oriented correctly based off the sketch points, okay? Um, and then I can pattern them round, but I'm going to encounter a little bit of a problem here. Let's just see what I mean by that. So I'm going to hit circular pattern, um, and I'm going to choose this, uh, these, these features here, the existing pattern, and my rotation axis is going to be the center point there, okay? And I'll just pattern it round, I don't know, 10 times, something like that. Um, I'm going to leave the orientation as the default, and I'm going to say, OK, everything appears all right now, but let's just see how this comes out. Let's say OK. We've got a bit of a problem here. I uh, came across this when I was producing this part. 
every possibility that I'm being an idiot, but that definitely is not right. Um, and for me, I think that that should be right. But my workaround to get that to look correct is actually not to use a join feature for these nozzles at all. Um, you see what the problem is here, right? These features from the original pattern are correctly oriented, but these patterned ones are not. So, how to get around that? Well, I'm going to go back to the original extrusion for the nozzle, double click on it, and I'm going to make it a new solid. Okay? Um, I'm going to say OK. Some things are going to fall over, but don't panic. There's never any need to panic in Inventor when this happens. Work your way through methodically and uh, don't jump out the window. So I'm going to say accept. Um, and I just need to go and fix a few things. So I need to go into extrusion six here. The next one, that's the cut through the nozzle. And I need to say which solid it's cutting through. So I'm going to say select solid here. It's cutting through that one. So I'm going to say OK. That's fine. That one's fixed. The sketch pattern is fixed as well. Orientation doesn't seem to be sorted yet, but hold your horses. Um, I'm going to go into sketch driven pattern now. Um, this one here. And now the, the trick I found to actually get, get this to work how it's supposed to was to actually pattern the solid, not the feature. So I'm going to choose to pattern solids. Got some great tools, um, uh, updated uh, improved tools for patterning solids in Inventor 2017. So um, I'm going to choose to pattern solids here and pattern this solid. Um, and I'm going to join it to this solid as well. Okay, um, And everything else can stay the same. So I'm going to say OK to that. This pattern itself doesn't appear to have be any to be any different once it figures that out. But as we can see, the circular pattern's fallen over as well. So I'm going to double click on the circular pattern. Just save the part first. Uh, double click on the circular pattern, and I need to tell it which solid I'm patterning now as well. So I created a new solid. I'm doing a sketch-driven pattern of that solid, not of the feature. And then I'm doing a circular pattern of the solid as well. So I'm, I'm using a sort of a multi-body multi -body solid workflow the whole way through, really. So I'm going to say pattern solids. I'm just going to pattern this solid here, not the, the rest of the part. OK, so and now uh, I'm going to join that to the existing solid and I can combine them with this tool later on. But um, I don't need to worry about all these settings down here. I'm just going to say OK. And now if I use that method, the multi-solid method, the orientation of those features is correct. So let's just zoom out and appreciate the majesty a little bit. So there we go, there's my pattern, all based off of this 3D sketch here. So if this 3D sketch changes, or even in fact if extra points appear in this 3D sketch. So for instance, if I was to go into this 3D sketch and actually add a point that was not uh, in this original spline, so I'm just going to use the point tool, chuck any point in, in 3D space um, here, for instance, um, or maybe not there, that was a bit silly, let's hit undo on that, let's chuck a point down here, let's see if we can actually just uh, constrain it onto the face with this clever new tool in 2017 as well, so I'm going to say on face, and this is the post constrain option, so there's drawing on the face, but here's after the after the deed, I want to constrain the point onto the face. So I'm going to pick this point and constrain that onto the face there. And that's hopefully worked. So then I should be able to drag this point around. And that point should always stay on the face now, which is really nice. So if I want another nozzle to be appearing, sort of maybe right, here-ish. I could, of course, dimension that up as well. But let's just go with this one here for now. Um, let's try and move that up a bit, there we go. Um, now because that's the center point in the sketch, if I finish the sketch, I get another nozzle there as well. So really flexible way of um, designing, patterning your features with 3D sketches. Let's just turn off these planes. Just going to right click on these planes here. Clean it up a little bit. Turn off the sketches, just right click and V for, for that. Turn off this work axis. Let's return to the assembly. Let's just appreciate the majesty a little bit. Fun for the whole family. Thank you very much.